Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to be with Stephen today. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, oh, and it's such a pleasure to be with you. This is going to be a real interesting and I think eye-opening conversation for most of us that are listening in. Uh, I'd love for you to introduce yourself and the work that you do in uh, none of that. So yeah, tell us a bit about you. Yeah, so I uh, my name is Stephen. I run a ministry called the Arctic Hope Project. It's under uh, a larger ministry called the Bill Franken Evangelistic Association. Uh, Arctic Hope Project was launched in 2014 uh, in Nunavut after an 11-year-old boy took his life in a uh, community called Cape Dorset. Cape Dorset's a small community. About uh, 1,400 people live in this, this small little community. And um, yeah, I mean, at the time... I, I was traveling with the, with the founder of this ministry, Bill Prankard, um, and he he just said, if if God can do something, if God is big enough to stop suicide in Nunavut, Cape Doris, it has to be the place that we 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 launch in, and uh, so that's when we launched. I uh, married I, I married now for almost nine years. My wife and I have five beautiful daughters, uh, ranging from six to uh, twin newborn uh, baby girls. So. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just, it's a wild journey. We're seeing God, you know, move across uh, the, the Canadian Arctic. We've traveled to every community in the territory of Nunavut, all 25 communities. Uh, we've seen hundreds of uh, people give their hearts to the Lord. And the, the big thing going forward is, is just raising up disciples in each of these communities to be uh, agents of hope is what we're calling them. But really people with, with uh, incredible backstories of, of brokenness and abuse, and, and, and how God has transformed their lives and, and God is using their lives to transform uh, the lives of them around them. So, so, you know, we're excited. God's moving right now in, in Cape Dorset, uh, despite a global pandemic. And uh, I get to live here in Ottawa and do these Zoom meetings with uh, Inuit in the North. How did you even end up doing this? Like what, give us some of your background story. Yeah, so I, at 14 is, is when I met Jesus. I, I grew up here in Ottawa. My, my mother comes from Nunavut. Uh, she comes from a different Nunavut community uh, called Pangertung. And um, yeah, I grew up here in Ottawa, grew up going to church, kind of the, the classic uh, child Christian experience, Sunday morning in and out. You know, I didn't care for church. Um, I met Jesus at 14 radically i mean everything in my life changed i i went from a guy who'd smoke pot chase girls uh to meeting jesus finding this like what, what it felt like was was liquid love filling my heart and it, it was it was jesus man it was it was god's love filling me uh so i went from smoking pot chasing girls to all i wanted was was jesus in my life and i wanted everyone in in my high school to know jesus uh, at 16 is is when things really kind of took a turn for the worst. I was uh, abused by a guy who uh, went to the church that my family went to uh, for a couple of years. I mean, really, things were were dark, you know, and and uh, trauma and the shock of everything kind of uh, settled in. 18, I started drinking, and at 19, I, I knew that something had to change in my life. So, started coming back to church. Met Bill Prankard, the founder of this ministry. Uh, he, uh, he said that they would, the church would count, uh, cover all the counseling fees. Um, and they just wanted to see me on my feet. So yeah, it's, it's a wild thing because, you know, out of the brokenness that I experienced as a teenager, God is using that same thing to, to bring hope, healing, and, uh, and really a future for so many Inuit teenagers living in Nunavut right now. Well, it's obvious you're passionate about the work that you do. You love the work that you do. Can you tell us some things that are happening right now in this present moment? Yeah, so I, I haven't been to Nunavut in, in over a year. I think February 2020, just a month before uh, Canada shut down, was the last trip I took to the Arctic. Uh, Cape Dorset right now, the community that we launched in uh, in 2014, our uh, Inuit Youth Suicide Prevention Program, uh, right now they are having almost night after night uh, meetings at one of the churches. They're having salvations. People are getting baptized in water and in the spirit. They're having drug and alcohol um, dealers pouring their paraphernalia down the toilet because they've just met Jesus. All of this was because of one man who was uh, this community's most violent alcoholic, drug and alcohol addict. He met Christ about a year and a half ago, 
and now he's he's Cape Doors' number one evangelist. He's kind of the guy who's who's leading the charge there. And uh, we're believing that this same thing will happen in every community. And uh, and ultimately that that suicide where the highest suicide rates exist in the in the nation, uh, that in Nunavut, we will ultimately see suicide completely fall off the map. Wow, Stephen, this is so inspiring. Like, why, why don't we wrap up with what is your hope and prayer for the church in Canada? Man, I mean, the, I think we're on the verge of one of the most profound and widespread moves of, of the Spirit of God across this nation. And what that means is, is people who don't know Jesus will meet Jesus, and we will see uh, disciples made across this nation from all walks and, and, and creeds alike. So uh, I, I think it's a fantastic time to be praying and, and just kind of waiting, but also engaged in, in what God is, is about to do. Thank you so much for sharing your heart, your passion, your love for Jesus. Honestly, it's so contagious. And for folks that are listening in, check out Arctic Hope. Thanks so much, Stephen, for being with us today. Thank you.